Today we're going to head outside to draw the clock tower. So just a simple drawing, pencils with a little soft pastel for color. We're going to be doing a two point perspective. So you see the two points, one on the right side of the page, one on the left side. They can also be brought off the page so you don't see the vanishing point. So the tower would be in the middle. All the lines and the bricks on the right side will follow the line on the right side of the paper and all the bricks and the lines on the left side follow the line, the dot on the left side of the paper. As long as you follow these lines and I sort of set up the lines to be at the middle of the tower so that's where your uh, eye level would, would be towards the middle of the tower not uh, at the bottom. Sometimes people put it at the bottom to make the tower look taller. All right, so now we're looking at the tower and we see it's sort of a gothic um, stone structure. There's this door at the bottom and there's another little tower on the left and it's on this island in the middle of the village. So I just took my little seat, went outside and did this sketch right in front of the tower. Okay, so I erased the first number two pencil. Now, most of the number two pencil. Now we switch to the charcoal pencil. So the reason why I like the charcoal is, is we could smear it and it's, we could blend the colors together, which saves a lot of time in shadowing and gets rid of the sketch marks. So, you know, they call this sketching because you don't want to start with an exact definite line. You want to be, to have a broken line. And you're not making anything definite right away. Everything is loose. That's why they call it sketching. It's a little sketchy. Okay, so here we have the basic structure of the tower, the roof, and then the top area is opened where the bell would be. So you could see through it, and there's this gear inside. I don't know what it is. Okay, so these are the bricks. All the bricks, like I said, have to line up and, and head towards that one vanishing point that dot on the right and then on the left side same thing so now with this rounded you have to kind of go with the flow because this is rounded uh, that tower on the left all right so now we have the doorway at the bottom everything in charcoal now i have the blending stick which i just started using recently instead of using my finger and this is a lot better because it's very uh narrowed pinpoint to a nice uh, tight uh, point so it's just a piece of uh, paper or whatever you can use uh, a paper towel or your finger I always just use my finger to smear everything okay this is a little bit more of a controlled smear okay so we're gonna uh, look at the whole tower together okay now I got the kneaded eraser which is great because it's an eraser that you could mold into a shape you can mold it into a nice point it's very easy to use now I'm back to the number two pencil sometimes I like these lead pencils because you get a nice uh, tight uh, point and the number two is very light and it's easy to erase. So we're gonna go through everything a couple of times. Number two pencil, the blending stick, and then the charcoal pencil. Okay, so now uh, we need to erase every now and then because it gets, you don't wanna have it too dark at the beginning. All right, back to the charcoal. So the charcoal is the fun part because you get to go quick and loose and, um, and you get to blend everything together. The door at the bottom is a little strange, so I'm gonna see, I might change it a little bit from the way it actually looks. 
Right, so these are the small little bricks, the a decorative uh, ornamentation bricks around the clock. Space also. Okay, so now the top has a piece of metal on the top, but everything else is brick. All right, so let's go into more detail and get more and more refined as we go because okay now we're in the studio okay i did this sketch initially to see what i wanted i'm going to put in mostly what is there there's a couple of buildings in the background it's on this triangle shaped property that the traffic goes around so we're going to include all of that Okay, now we're gonna do, there's some bushes, there's a land, I'm gonna add a lantern in be, to balance it out because that other small tower was on the left, so I felt maybe we needed something also on the right to balance it out. So I'm looking at my little drawing that I that just popped in of, uh, that I did with these buildings in the background. So now the buildings in the background also have to follow the lines f to the vanishing point, the two-point perspective. So two-point perspective is excellent for buildings and something right in front of you, right in the middle. One-point perspective is really something that's nice to use just for a background. Not So this two-point perspective usually is used for when the building is the subject of the picture and everything follows it here we'll put two people in the background walking and there's um, this is the uh, lantern it looks a little strange i might have to fix it and there's actually a little cannon on the left <laughs> that's here in the village so we'll put a couple of trees we're not going to get too involved in plants and flowers we're just going to make a suggestion of the plants here's the curb sidewalk okay back to the blending which kind of brings it into reality when you get this blending stick out or use your finger and to me that really makes it look more realistic because you're knocking down the hard edge of the charcoal and and then smoothing it into the wider part so now we have the eraser and we always try to keep erasing now let's add a little color this this tower actually has some brown in it so i have my brown it's like a charcoal i don't know i got them at the art students league uh, they used to sell these um, brown pencils it's sort of like a you know regular brown pencil okay now we're going to the soft pastels so soft pastels are not like oil pastels that you have to put a lot of pastel on for them but when i'm not into that so these soft pastels are very much like chalk even though i don't know what they're made of so they're great they go on very light and then you could spray over the top with a fixative if you want to preserve everything and hang it up on the wall all right so now i have my brown green i started with a little yellow and there's some blue in the sky all with the soft pastel and now here the beauty of it you can use the white pastel soft pastel it's like a white chalk and that kind of ties all your colors in together running the white over everything Okay, so here's some white, and now um, we're gonna just add yellow all around. So I don't like to just put the color in one area. We like to blend it through the whole picture. So here we are with some bricks and some brown, and now back to shadowing with the charcoal. The best thing about this charcoal is to is when you're working with the shadows very quick. I kind of like black. Almost every picture I have, I include black in it. Some people don't. They like just dark browns and dark colors. But I feel, since I'm also a photographer, 
you know, black is very important and it makes everything stand out. We want it to look three dimensional. That's why we're doing this two point perspective with everything. So now this is the blending stick again. So after a while of uh, drawing, we always go to the blending stick. Now we'll add some mountains. There are some small hills in the background. Anyway, so we'll add those in and go back to the brown pencil. Now the black charcoal to continue with the shadows. And let's see the little village. I'm not going to get too involved in the village. I was maybe we'll put some people. I don't know. Okay, here's some brown in the back. So because we don't want it, even though there's uh, little mountains or, or hills. I don't want to just draw green hills, you know, I'm trying not to make the sky too blue and the, and the hills too green. Even though they are green and blue, for me, I don't like to go too heavy into saturated color. We're gonna, it's mostly um, mild colors and sepia tones, black and white. All right, so now I'm trying to figure out what else we're going to put in here. I could put, I don't want to put the cars in. We could put a horse and carriage, a horse going by or something, you know, old fashioned. So, or I'm not going to get involved with too much. But if you're doing this, copying this drawing, you could put people in the background, some people walking down the sidewalk, someone push cart or anything you want. Of course, I'm eliminating other things I don't like you know we want it to be very picturesque so we don't look at everything and copy everything there's some rocks around this little triangle so we'll put the rocks in that's easy to do a couple of little trees two or three trees in the background and then the village road going off to the right and to the left so it's a clock tower so we want to put the clock in but not make it too detailed the clock just kind of a suggestion of the hands all right so that's about it for the clock tower tutorial i hope you enjoyed it make sure you like and subscribe stay tuned for the next drawing video i'm paul petronella thank you for watching and have a wonderful day